Hello nurses and hello top notchers. Welcome back to our YouTube channel. For today's topic, ang pag-usapan po natin is all about your medical surgical nursing. So pag-usapan po natin ngayon ang ating benign prostatic hyperplasia. So habang pinag-usapan po natin ang ating BPH, meron po tayo ditong limang common board question na pwedeng lumabas sa inyong board exam. Situation, a 69 years old patient was admitted in the medical surgical unit and is diagnosed with benign prostatic hyperplasia. Question number one, the nurse anticipates that the signs and symptoms of BPH do not include A. Frequency of urination B. Pain on urination C. Dribbling of urine or D. Hesitancy in starting urination So, take note for your question number one, our keyword here is not a signs and symptoms of BPH So, it is a negative question So, ang kailangan nating hanapin dito ay hindi ka bilang na sintomas ng benign prostatic hyperplasia. So, letter A, letter B, letter C, or letter D. So, always remember that in your benign prostatic hyperplasia, the hallmark sign of this condition is changes in urinary habit. So, lahat po ng ating nasa choices ay mga changes in urinary habit. But which of the following option is not included as a signs and symptoms of BPH? So para maintindihan po natin ang ating BPH, pag-usapan natin yung BPH. So if we say benign prostatic hyperplasia or BPH, BPH is a non-malignant condition or a non-cancerous condition where the prostate gland of older men enlarge. Okay? So lumalaki ang prostate gland ng mga lalaki. So, one important thing here is your BPH is a non-cancerous condition. So, ibig pong sabihin yan, kahit lumaki ang prostate gland ng mga lalaki, hindi po ito maglilid sa prostate cancer. Kasi nga, it is a benign condition of your prostate gland. If we say prostate gland, prostate gland is the walnut-shaped structure located below your bladder and anterior of your rectum. So, your prostate gland surrounds your urethral Bladder. So, ibig sabihin po niyan, ang inyong prostate gland or ang ating prostate gland ay nakapalibot lamang po ito sa ating urethral bladder. So, at the bladder outlet, nandyan po yung ating prostate gland. So, any enlargement of your prostate may affect your urination. Okay? So, BPH is the most common prostate problem in men. So, almost all men will develop some enlargement of the prostate as they grow older. So, by the age of 60, 50% of men will have some signs of BPH. And by the age of 85, 90% of men will have signs of your BPH. So at the age of 40, urologist requires men to have a yearly examination. And that is by DRE or your digital rectal examination and your PSA blood levels. So again, at the age of 40, it is required for men to have a yearly examination. Again, by the age of 60, 50% of men will have signs of BPH. And by the age of 85, 90% of men will have signs of BPH. Then next, although that the exact cause of your BPH is unknown, we have here our risk factors. And number one, we have your age. So age was the only significant demographic risk factor of your BPH. Okay? Uh, another risk factors for your BPH includes your BPH mnemonics. We have your black men and Hispanic. So, mas marami pong nagkakaroon ng ating BPH sa ating black Americans compared sa ating mga Asians, especially yung mga native Japanese. So, mas marami pong reported case of BPH sa mga black men and Hispanic. And for letter P, poor diet and exercise, especially yung mga mahilig sa ating high meat and fat diet okay so high meat and fat in diet can also be a risk factor for your bph and letter h history or familial history so pag meron pong isang miyembro sa pamilya nyo or sa inyong lineage na nagkaroon ng uh, prostate problem or any condition related to your prostate pwede po siyang magkaroon ng benign prostatic hyperplasia so we have your age then bph mnemonics again So, age was the only significant demographic risk factor of BPH. So, another with your age, we have your BPH mnemonics. We have your black men and Hispanic, poor diet and exercise, and 
history. Okay? So, familial history of prostate problem. Okay? So, yan po yung mga, mga known risk factors na pwedeng mag-contribute sa development ng ating benign prostatic hyperplasia or your BPH. So, again, so don't forget that age is the most common risk factor for BPH. So, there may be a racial component as well because black and Hispanic men develop BPH earlier than white men but Asian men develop it later. So, always remember also that smoking, sexual history, and a sedentary lifestyle are not risk factors for the development of your BPH. So, ibig po sabihin yan, smoking, sexual history, and sedentary lifestyle are not risk factors of your BPH. Okay? Then next, after the risk factors of your BPH, we have also your signs and symptoms of this condition. So, for benign prostatic hyperplasia, the symptoms are easy to detect. And GSK created an acronym. So, it is based on the International Prostate Symptom Score. So, for the signs and symptoms, we have your fun-wise mnemonics. Okay? So, for letter F, F is for frequency. Then, for letter U, U is for urgency. Then, for letter N, N is for nocturia or how often you need to get up at night to pee. And for W, we have your for weeks stream. And for letter I, it is for the intermittency of your urination. And letter S for straining. And E for incomplete emptying. So, yan po yung ating pinaka-acronym or pinaka-mnemonics for your signs and symptoms of your BPH. Again, for your fun waste mnemonics, we have your F for frequency of urination or madalas kang umihi. U for urgency of urination, yung feeling mo, ihing-ihi ka na. And N for nocturia or frequent urination at night. And W for weak stream or hindi maganda yung daloy o yung stream ng ihi mo. So, padribble, dribble po siya. Okay? Patak-patak or dribbling urination. I for intermittent urination. S for straining or hesitancy to start urination and for letter E, incomplete emptying. Yung kakatapos mo lang umihi pero feeling mo meron ka pang ilalabas ulit. So that is your fun-wise mnemonics for your mnemonics of your signs and symptoms for BPH. Then next, let's talk about your screening procedures for your BPH. So, for screening test of your BPH, we have your PSA and your DRE. So, PSA is the prostate-specific antigen or your uh, substance-specific to your prostate gland. So, it is used to determine and to differentiate prostate cancer and to your prostate enlargement. So, always remember that the normal PSA level for men is around 0 to 4 nanogram per ml. So, take note that the normal limit of your PSA level for 40 years old men is 2.5 nanogram per ml. So, anything more than 4 nanogram to 10 nanogram per ml is considered suspicious and unsafe. So, anything more than 4 nanogram per ml up to 10 nanogram per ml of your PSA level, you must report it to the urologist, okay? So, report it to the urologist because the patient here has a 25% chance of having prostate cancer, okay? So, meron po siyang 25% chance na meron po siyang prostate cancer. Then next, for DRE naman, DRE is the Digital Rectal Examination. So, pag tanuin ka sa board exam kung saan ka magpapalpate in your DRE, always palpate the anterior wall of your rectum kasi your uh, prostate gland is located anterior of the rectum. So, what is the finding for your uh, benign prostatic hyperplasia under your DRE? So, take note, in your DRE, the prostate is asymmetrical and enlarged, okay? Prostate is asymmetrical and enlarged for your digital rectal examination. So, again, the diagnostic tests that are used to differentiate BPH from prostate cancer are the DRE and PSA. So, in a digital rectal examination for BPH, the prostate is asymmetrical and enlarged. But in prostate cancer, the exam shows nodules in a fixed position. Again, so doon mo malalaman kung ito ba'y BPH lamang or 
prostate cancer na. Kasi pag BPH lang, meron kang mapapalpit dito na asymmetrical and enlarged prostate. But in prostate cancer, there will be a nodule in a fixed position. Okay? So that is your diagnostic test for your benign prostatic hyperplasia. Then next, after your screening test or diagnostic test for your uh, BPH, let's go to the medications. So number one, we have your finasteride or the Proscar and the uh, dutasteride or the avodite drug for your BPH. So your finasteride and your drasteride drug works by decreasing your production of your hormone dihydrotestosterone. Okay? So pinapababa po niya ang production of dihydrotestosterone hormone. The next number two medication is your terazosin and the doxazosin or the cardura. Okay? So terazosin and the doxazosin are drugs that relaxes the prostate muscles. But when you are taking your terazosin and doxazosin, also with your tamsolosin, the most common side effects of these drugs are lightheadedness, weakness, and retrograde ejaculation. And for number three, dutasteride and tamsolosin used to improve your urine flow. Okay? So, ini-improve po niya yung urine flow. Ito yung ating gamot na tamsolosin and your dutasteride medications. So, these are the medications used for your benign prostatic hyperplasia. So, along with those medications stated before, we have your lifestyle changes also that may help your client with mild BPH. So, we have your avoiding alcohol, avoiding caffeine, exercising regularly, and including Kegel exercises for the management of your incontinence. So, take note, lumabas na rin po ito sa board exam. Your Kegels exercise for the management of your urinary incontinence. And avoiding drinking fluids within 2 hours of bedtime, that is to prevent your nocturia or uh, your problem that will uh, cause your insomnia. Okay? And reduce stress. That is to prevent also your incontinence. So, along with those medications, we have also your lifestyle changes that may help your client with mild BPH, okay? So, avoid alcohol, avoid caffeine, exercise regularly, include Kegel to prevent your incontinence, avoid drinking fluids within 2 hours of bedtime, and reduce stress, okay? So, yan po yung mga pwede natin gawin din para mamanage natin ang mga sintomas ng ating benign prostatic hyperplasia. So, for the question number one, the nurse anticipates that the signs and symptoms of BPH do not include A. Frequency of urination B. Pain on urination C. Dribbling of urine or D. Hesitancy in starting urination Okay? So, take note, we have your uh, keyword uh, do not include So, ibig sabihin po yan, negative question po yan So, which one is not included as signs and symptoms of your BPH At napag-usapan naman na natin kanina that your signs and symptoms are the fun-wise mnemonics Frequency of urination, urgency of urination, nocturia, weak or dribbling urination And we have also your in uh, intermittency of urination Then your... Uh, is training or hesitancy to start urination and your incomplete emptying. So, ang hindi po kabilang po sa ating signs and symptoms of your BPH is your letter B. Okay? So, pain on urination kasi wala po siya sa ating fun-wise mnemonics. Then next, for question number two, the patient asked the nurse to explain his condition which is BPH which statements are correct explanation by the nurse? Number one, BPH blocks the urethra. Number two, it obstructs the urinary bladder. Number three, it spreads to other parts of the body. Or number four, it leads to urinary retention. So take note, correct explanation po ang hinahanap ng ating question. So it is a positive question. So unahin natin tanggalin ang obviously wrong uh, choices or yung maling-mali talaga na option na nakikita natin So, una nating tatanggalin dito yung number 3 So, it spreads to other parts of the body Why? 
So take note na pag sinabi po nating BPH, BPH is a benign prostatic hyperplasia. So if we say benign, benign is non-cancerous. So it doesn't have the capability to metastasis, okay? Or to metastasize, okay? So wala po siyang kakayahan para kumalat sa ibang parte ng katawan. Kasi pag ito po yung metastasize that is a prostate cancer, not a BPH condition, okay? Tandaan niyo So tanggal po natin ang ating Uh, number 3 option So, lahat ng mga option na may number 3 Tanggal na So, B, C, D are removed in your choices So, eliminated na po yung tatlo So, ang naiwan na lang is letter A So, 1 and 4 is the correct answer for question number 2 So, always remember that if we say BPH BPH blocks the urethra but not the bladder So, ang blinablock lamang po ng ating BPH is the bladder outlet not the bladder okay the bladder outlet kung nasaan yung ating urethra so mali din yung ating number 2 option kasi sabi sa number 2 it obstructs the bladder okay it is not the bladder being uh, obstructed but it is the bladder outlet only okay so it blocks the urethra and it leads to urinary retention so the correct answer here is letter A 1 and 4 Then next, for question number three, what immediate danger should the nurse anticipate post-transurethral resection of the prostate or the TURP? A. Infection B. Bleeding C. Thrombosis or D. Shock Okay, so take note, what immediate danger should the nurse anticipate post-transurethral resection of the prostate or your TURP? procedure. So, always remember ang tanong is immediate danger. So, take note that the immediate danger after prostate surgery is bleeding and hemorrhagic shock. Okay? So, bleeding and hemorrhagic shock po ang pinaka-immediate danger natin after your third procedure. But, in your choices for your question number 3, nandyan po yung ating letter B na bleeding at nandyan din yung ating letter D na shock. So, automatic na Tanggal na po ang letter A which is the infection and tanggal na rin ang ating letter C which is thrombosis. Okay? So alin sa dalawa ang pinaka-immediate danger post TURP? Okay? Or the TURP procedure. So always remember that the most immediate danger after prostate surgery is bleeding or your hemorrhage. Tandaan nyo po yan. So bleeding or severe hemorrhage is the most immediate danger after your third procedure. So, if after 20 minutes and the bleeding is not controlled, surgical exploration may be considered that is to prevent your hypovolemic shock. So, in your question number 3, the most immediate danger should the nurse anticipate post-TURP procedure is your letter B. Bleeding, hindi po shock ang pinaka-immediate danger natin. So, mang mangyari una yung ating bleeding or hemorrhage bago po siya magkaroon ng hypovolemic shock. Okay? So, always assess for a post of bleeding. Because in TERP and prostatectomy, patients are risk of your severe bleeding or hemorrhage after surgery. And usually, within first 24 hours after your Procedure. So, ang isasagot po natin dito is your letter B. Okay? So, bleeding is the most immediate danger after your TURP. Okay? So, since bleeding is increased in the sitting position, so which increases blood and venous pressure, the patient is encouraged to rest in a bed with the head of the bed slightly elevated. So, bawal po siya in a sitting position. Dapat po ay Uh, lying on bed but with the head of the bed elevated okay so another is to watch out for your turp syndrome okay so aside to your uh, severe hemorrhage or bleeding watch out for turp syndrome so turp syndrome occurs when the client absorbs the irrigation fluids during and after surgery so for your turp syndrome watch out for your clinical manifestations like your hyponatremia decreased hematocrit, hypertension, bradycardia, nausea, and confusion. Okay? So, if not treated promptly, TERP syndrome may result in dysrhythmias and or seizure. Again, so, aside from your uh, severe bleeding or hemorrhage, 
watch out also for your TERP syndrome, okay? So, TERP syndrome occurs when the client absorbs the irrigation fluids during and after surgery. So, along with your clinical manifestations to be watched out, so check for the presence of your hyponatremia, decreased hematocrit, hypertension, bradycardia, nausea, and confusion. Okay? So, yan po ating titingnan, TERP syndrome. Then next, for question number 4, the nurse knows that the normal color of the bladder irrigation drainage right after TURP or TERP is A. Reddish pink B. Bright red C. Light pink or D. Yellowish Take note and circle your right after TERP So, ibig sabihin yan, wala pang uh, 24 hours period So, within 24 hours period pa lang yan or just right after the procedure, what is your expected color of your uh, bladder irrigation drainage? Okay, so take note kasi kapag ang pasyente mo is nag-undergo po siya ng ating TURP or uh, any prostate surgery, kailangan po niya mag-undergo ng ating CBI, okay? So if we say CBI, CBI is the Continuous Bladder Irrigation Procedure. That is to prevent blood clots, okay? blood clot formation into the lumen of catheters or to your urethral bladder. So, your patient who undergone a prostate surgery or your third procedure, they need to undergo CBI, okay? Or continuous bladder irrigation for 3 days. So, kailangan nilang mag-CBI for 3 days. So, for your patient under CBI, check for the color of your drainage. So, for the first day or right after your TURP or prostate surgery, the color of your discharge is reddish pink urine, okay? So, reddish pink po right after your TURP or within the first day after your procedure. Then, after 24 hours or second day of your procedure, the color of your discharge is color pink. Okay, so color pink na po siya at the second day and at the third and fourth day, the color of your urine drainage is clear or yellowish na po siya. Okay, so pag uh, nasa third day or fourth day ka na, clear or yellowish na ang discharge sa ating CBI. So for your patient under CBI, check also for any report of bright red discharge or any signs of your frank bleeding. So, abnormal po yan kapag bright red discharge or pati yung ating dark red or the dark discharge with your obvious blood clots. Pag meron po tayo nakitang ganyan, you must report it to the urologist. Okay, so report to the urologist for your frank bleedings or your bright red bleeding and also with your dark discharges with obvious blood clots. Again, so we have your CBI. So we have here our important notes in your CBI. So CBI is our mnemonics. For letter C, continuous irrigation of the bladder is by the use of your normal saline solution or 0.9 NaCl. So ginagamit po natin na solution for your irrigation is your normal saline solution or your PNSS. Then for letter B, Bladder spasm and the urge to void suggest that a blood clot may be occluding the catheter. Okay? So, yan po yung ating tatandaan dyan. So, pag merong bladder spasm, tapos meron po tayong urge to void, that may suggest a blood clot. So, you must increase your irrigation. Okay? Then, next for letter I, increase irrigation when urine becomes darker. Okay, so if we say CBI, C for continuous irrigation of the bladder using NSS. B for bladder spasm and urge to void suggests a blood clot that may uh, occluding the catheter. So, ang gagawin natin pag ganyan is uh, manually instill and then withdraw or irrigate approximately 60 ml of saline into the catheter. So, pag merong occlusion doon sa catheter by your uh, complaint of bladder spasm, so ang gagawin natin dyan na una is to uh, manually instill and then withdraw or irrigate approximately uh, 60 ml of saline into the catheter. And letter I, increase irrigation when urine becomes darker. Okay, so tandaan niyo po yan. So we have your CBI mnemonics. Then next, we have also your points to remember in your patient under your CBI. So if we say CBI, CBI, a three-way triple lumen catheter is required for CBI. So, 3-way triple lumen po ang kailangan natin for your CBI. So, one lumen is used to drain urine. 
Another is used to inflate the catheter and the final lumen carries the irrigation solution. The next number, uh, number two points to remember, after turf urine normally appears red to pink. And normal saline irrigant usually is infused at a rate of 40 to 60 drops per minute or according to facility protocol. So take note, ang binibigay po natin dito na irrigating solution na PNSS ay nasa 1,000 ml. So the amount of returned fluid should be 1,200 ml which corresponds to the amount of instilled fluid plus the client's urine output. So 1,000 ml of your irrigating solution plus 200 ml of your urine which will reflect catheter patency. So, ganun po yun. So, 1,000 ml nating uh, solution, then yung urine niya, dapat ganun din dapat yung lumabas. Okay? It will reflect catheter patency. So, pag mas maliit, ibig sabihin yan, occluded yung ating lumens or catheter. So, it needs increase in your irrigation. So, it needs increase irrigation kapag merong occlusion sa ating catheter. Okay? So, these are the points to remember for your patient under your CBI. So, a three-way a three triple lumen is required for your CBI catheter. So, after TURP, the urine normally appears red to pink and normal saline irrigant usually is infused at a rate of 40 to 60 drops per minute or it is according to the facility protocol. And always remember that the amount of returned fluid should correspond to the amount of instilled fluid plus the client's urine output which will reflect patency of your catheter, okay? So, take note that when bladder spasm after TURP occurs, it suggests blood clots that obstructing your catheter. So, irrigation of the catheter should be the first action to be taken. So, pag merong bladder spasm, ang una mong gagawin is to irrigate as soon as possible. So, irrigate mo siya, uh, and that is your uh, and that is your first action in cases of bladder spasm in your patient under CBI. And next number five, sexual dysfunctions like impotence, erectile dysfunction, and lack of libido are likely possibilities in what prostatic surgery? A. Suprapubic prostatectomy. B. TURP. C. Laparoscopic prostatectomy or D. Perineal prostatectomy. So. In your question number 5, the correct answer here is your perineal prostatectomy. Kasi ang TURP at saka yung iba ay hindi po siya nagkukos ng ating impotence and erectile dysfunction. So the risk of your impotence, erectile dysfunction or sexual dysfunctions and the lack of libido is more likely associated with your perineal prostatectomy. So the correct answer for your question number 5 is letter D. Perineal prostatectomy can uh, can cause your sexual dysfunctions like your impotence, erectile dysfunction, lack of libido. So yun po ang pwede maging complication ng ating perineal prostatectomy. So always remember that TERP is the most widely used procedure for prostate gland removal pero hindi po siya nagkukos ng ating uh, impotence or sexual dysfunctions because it requires no incision. So, TERP is especially suitable for men with relatively minor prostatic enlargement and for those who are poor surgical risk. So, the correct answer for question number 5 is num uh, letter D. It is your perineal prostatectomy that causes your sexual dysfunction. So, this would be the end of our topic for your BPH. So, sa mga nag-subscribe po sa aking channel, maraming maraming salamat po. At sa mga hindi pa po nakakapag-subscribe, just click the subscribe button below. And para updated po kayo lagi sa aking mga uploads, click your bell button for your notifications. Okay? And also, salamat din po sa mga supporters natin ng ating Super Chat and Super Stickers na nagbibigay po na kanyang support by sending me Super Chat and Super Stickers during our video premiere. So, isa-shoutout ko na po ang inyong mga pangalan sa ating mga susunod na premieres or mga upload contents dito sa aking YouTube channel. Again, once again, maraming maraming salamat po sa inyong pagsama at panonood sa ating uh, benign prostatic hyperplasia sa ating medical surgical Nursing. Once again, maraming 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 salamat po.